here we are at SCCA Tamale. We are about to tour the place. Um, you are welcome to Savannah Center for Contemporary Art. Um, in brief, we call it SCCA Tamale. Um, I'll be your tour guide for the current exhibition. So please, let's go in. The building of SCCA Tamale, and we are coming to have an interesting uh, talk with the tour guide, Mr. Salom. So, please take over. Okay, um, you're welcome to Savannah Center for Contemporary Art. Um, the institution was founded in 2019 by the Ghanaian artist Ibrahim Mahama. Um, he decided to set up this place so that. Um, People can come and enjoy art from all localities and backgrounds. And then um, the space is an art place that's dedicated for exhibition making, research, and also extended into artists in residence. So whatever, what, what you know over here, it's basically um, exhibition, and then workshops, film screening, uh, and in between exhibition programs like uh, maybe um, um, book reading or maybe some learning on uh, programming and other stuff. Now, um, currently we have an exhibition going on titled Existing Otherwise, The Future of Coexistence. So this exhibition is a collaboration between um, a gallery in Germany called Gallery Vedin and uh, SCCA Tamale. One thing about the institution is that it's also, it has also expanded into two other institutions called Nkuma Volini and um, Red Clay. From here, we move to all those sites. Um, basically, existing otherwise has to do with the fact that um, the future of coexistence has to do with the fact that um, we are living in a critical time in terms of um, um, uh, war, in terms of um, gentrification, um, health crisis. So um, curators and artists were asking questions about how do we imagine life um, from now going on. So they try to, um, how do you call it, invite artists who one way or the other responded to the theme of the exhibition. So as you move around, you see certain works that probably might be interested to you or things that you are familiar with and are not familiar with. But artists have interesting way of combining things and making things out of probably nothing to make you reflect on life uh, and so many other issues. Yeah. Um, the exhibition um, features 16 artists, and we have international artists who are living in Berlin who have come to, um, uh, how do you call it, who are part of the exhibition, and also Ghanaian artists who are also invited. So it's a mix of international artists and Ghanaian artists. And the exhibition is multi sided, meaning that it's, uh, we have some of the works here. We have another one uh, uh, at the two places in, in Tamale. So please, let's move um, to some of the works that are in the, in the exhibition. So in art, um, the kind of world view that we are presenting over here, artists can use anything to do their work. Provided they have a, a very interesting argument or something that's quite convincing enough. So, this artist is called Ruska Buski. He's a Turkish artist who lives in Berlin. And uh, he has presented um, three banners which captures different images. Sometimes um, the writings on the, which is, which has thin uh, sort of, Sorry, the writings which are stitched on the banners do conflict with some of the images, for instance. So if you see, or it can be ambiguous. So if, if you see this um, element, for instance, this image, you see it's kind of like a trans species. It's either, you can't determine, determine whether it's female or male, sort of. And then, but at the same time, a, the title says soft. But when you look at the crocodile, we know that if you misbehave, if you misbehave a crocodile might 
by two of my heat with the tail. So you can see all those dimensions in it. Situations uh, might cause it for it to react in, in, that, uh, in that way or, uh, or not. And then you have another um, banana sister solidarity whereby you have uh, a cat and a dog coming together. But in natural fact, we, uh, we know that cat and dog don't meet uh, sometimes, or usually they don't meet, the other fight. And then you have another situation whereby you have some animals that are maybe on uh, lost at sea and they try to find their way in or, or onto the land or to the shore. So, and in some of the um, banners or the kind of stories that are being captured over here, you don't know the beginning or the end of the tale. It's given to you to imagine. Um, basically, that's it for Busquets' um, work. Do you have any question? Yes. 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 So please, how was the person was able to draw all these things? Interesting. Um, we have a technique called um, silk screen printing. So it's um, a technique that allows you to maybe uh, print one image several times by using uh, silk, uh, which is um, attached on a frame, and then you develop the, um, the screen by making by using a certain light sensitive uh, material to block images or the parts that you don't want the color to appear so it's a bit it can be simple also and also tedious at the, uh, tedious at the same time yeah, so that's what he used in uh, making this work yeah you're welcome um please with the 16 other artists yes coming together to form this, yeah. were they picked or...? Yes, they were selected okay. yeah, by the curator. And the show is curated by um, uh, a curator called Sovai uh, Hjolveg Olsen and uh, Ibrahim Mahama and Isabel Lewis. Or Lewis. Yes, so we have a work by Emily Hunt. She's an Australian artist who also lives in Berlin. Um, she was inspired by proverbs and languages, but at the same time, she got fascinated with power rings. I guess you know what power rings are. So they are rings that people believe uh, have certain potent, uh, potency, uh, or they, they can, they can uh, how do you call it, protect you, or they can uh, give you luck or sort of. So people wear it for different reasons. But she was fascinated by the fact that, okay, if these uh, rings can allow you to have access to so many things, why not um, play around with that idea? So these are not actual, they don't actually have powers, but they are objects, tiny objects, uh, or objects that are in the cosmos, maybe planets and other things that she um, minutely uh, tried to capture them on the ring. So this is made out of clay and then uh, with a material called glaze. That's the kind of paint used to um, color it. And they, fire it, they put it in a certain oven for it to, to get solidified. So uh, we all know that we have a certain emotional attachment to certain objects. Maybe you have a particular watch, a particular pen, a particular comb that you don't you wouldn't, you wouldn't want anybody to touch or maybe use. So that kind of emotional attachment is somehow represented in, the, in some of the objects that we have. Yeah. She made about 187 um, rings. And <clears throat> so far, I don't know how many are here. And uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, she wants people to interact with them. Also, because of COVID, people were scared to touch. You know, but she intentionally made it that people can interact with, with, the, with the object. So you can try them on, uh, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Some of them are broken, but she doesn't mind. Uh, yeah. So if you study the whole setup, you realize that this is a very big hand with tiny rings. Instead of making a very big ring on each finger, she decided to make tiny rings 
and then use something that will carry the rings. So she improvised by using, how do you call it, a crate where the earrings can sit. Yeah. Any question? Yes, please. Or comment? A question. Okay. This in front of the rings we see some things. Do they really have meanings? <coughs> Sorry. Mm, I, I won't I won't meaning as maybe it might mean something to whoever is going to wear it. But she was just selecting several objects that she thinks people might relate it. So the kind of objects she selected were basically objects that you can find around you. And also referring to objects that probably you might not see. Some of them have uh, references to certain planets uh, in, in, in the cosmos, in the universe. And then uh, she, was look, she said she was looking at uh, watching um, a channel on, uh, uh, how do you call it? Spe uh, studies of the cosmos or uh, on astronomy. So basically, that's what informs some of the objects over here. Yeah. Oops. So please, let's go to um, Sandra's work. So over here we have uh, the uh, installation of Sandatra. She's interested in uh, the materiality of painting. Basically, painting has been known for, uh, or we know that oil painting is the traditional medium of painting. So, and people respect that kind of uh, paint a lot. So what she, in history, in art history, artists try to question that um, idea or that kind of canon. So she's just trying to expand on that. By looking at the, the work or the painting, you realize that they are quite grainy. So what she uses over here is um, dye. Do you know what's called dye? Uh, dye is a kind of paint or pigment that's used to maybe color shirts or fabric. Yeah, so she uses that, those pigments mixed with sand and then a little adhesive to make this painting. So she represented different types of flowers that she came up on her own because she has been seeing flowers for, for a long time. And then um, the idea of flower is captured in two different ways over here. Here you see that the paint has been mixed with um, sand. And so the kind of output that you find over here is different from this one. Over here, just the dye which was spread or in a certain form in the, in the shape of a flower on, on, on sun or a, a clay soil. Do you get it? So the way the image of a flower looks over here is different from that one. Do, do you understand? When we go to red clay, we see another aspect of her work over here because uh, at, uh, at red clay, the flowers come alive. They can die, they can grow, and, and so on. So by here and here, they can die, they can grow. So it's like they are static. Yeah. Any question? Shall we? So let's go to this side. Do you identify anything over here? Uh, what do you, your mic? Yes, um, the clouds over yeah. there, uh -huh. the trees, okay. fish, yeah. um, a house. Okay. 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 Who else wants to try? Does it remind you of? Does this work remind you of anything that you've seen, you've experienced before? I can see a scorpion. Come again. A scorpion. 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 Yes, yes, there are scorpions in there. Okay. okay. So, this artist, his name is Salom Kuji. Yes, and then um, he tried to make uh, more of a collage of so many games that he has played. And then from that, he borrowed ideas of um, 
uh, and just of uh, the imageries that or how do, do I call it? He borrows certain ideas from the game, the way you move from one situation to the other. Certain situations are pre uh, presented to you for you, or tasks are presented for you for you to accomplish, and then either you might fail in the course of it and repeat it over and over again, or uh, in the course of doing that, you might fail or succeed. That will allow you to move from one point to the other. And sometimes it's based on time. So uh, in the image, you see different kinds of architecture, um, maybe different kinds of building styles, and they are informed by the buildings that we have in the northern region to uh, go into the northern part of uh, Africa, uh, or we call it the, Sahel, um, the sub um, the Sahelian architecture and also some of the designs are informed by uh, maybe the, um, the hats that Muslims wear. So you can see some of these patterns, something like this, that inform some of the patterns over here. So it's um, a collage of a game. A collage means that you put different things together, but at the same time, you can't play it. It's just a representation. You can only look at it and it gives you a sense. Probably you can use your eyes, try to see how you can move from one point to the other. Yeah, basically, that, that's it for this week. Okay. So, I want to ask them something. He mentioned the artist, right? Salam Kuje. And do we know him? Yes. Do we know him? Yes. I'm not feeling it. So, do we know him? Yes, we do. Please, can you tell us who he is? So, he's a director taking us through. Yes, let's okay. clap for him. Let's clap for him. <laughs> anyway, so I've asked some kids to uh, continue with the work, and this this is what they did at the bottom. I don't know, so you can see the difference in it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, the work was made with charcoal, and I've given you to some of you um, pieces of charcoal. I would like you guys to try it, like what some of the guys, um, the other kids did. So come up with your own traps, come up, come up with your own architecture. You can add so many things to it, it can be cars, objects, and so many other things. And see whether you can follow uh, with the design of the... You can go all over here, it doesn't matter. So, let's start. Yeah, you can go from here to, to the wall. Okay. Yeah, it's fast.
these are interesting drawings and uh, clap for yourselves <laughs> uh, so one thing about um, building up on the on the work is that you just have to study the patterns and how it's done so it could have been easier for you but all the same uh, I guess you guys had fun so thank you let's let's move on to the other one to the other work So in art, we have something called, um, there are different types of artworks. And over the year, art has expanded beyond the notion of painting, sculpture, drawing, and so on. So even the drawing that you guys did, you can see that it's not something you've done on paper. It can be easily wiped away. So artists have different motivations for, uh, for their works. Uh, over here, we are looking at another work. And in, the, in this situation, you see uh, images that are in two, dimension, uh, in, in two dimensions. And then you see a, a screen that is also installed on a, in, in a certain frame. You see another image that's pasted on one of the panels at the back here. So what this artist is trying to do, her name is Ellie Cortina, trying to do over here is to make you um, pay attention to images. We all consume images one way or the other through cell phones, television, internet, um, maybe walking on the street you see posters, other politicians, um, uh, how do you call it, um, portrait, or you see churches, uh, posters, maybe advertisement for something. So her work covers advertisement, TED Talk, and so on. But there's an, in an interesting in this video here that I want you to see. Um, she also, I listened to that voice. So that's a voice of a certain robot that looks like a, a human being. So it's so real and it's behaving. You see another one, that's also behaving. The black one is called Bina 48. So technology informs those kind of uh, uh, images. That robot can be classified under, under sculpture. Do you get it? <clears throat> so, but the artificial, in, and she uses, for, for her to communicate with us, she uses a kind of intelligence called artificial intelligence. Yeah. So she's trying to look at how technology has informed images that we experience. To the extent that some of these things that we might think that they are no uh, man-made, sorry, natural, are participating in our lives now. They are like our, they are like extensions of our lives. Maybe extension, extension of the human being. Maybe they can even think for you. They can help you do something. You can even communicate with. Her. And over here, she's trying to reflect on on herself as as uh, an artificial in, uh, being, sort of having a mind of her own to um, reflect on life. See her expressions. She can even blink, smile, and so on. Yeah. So, and some of the images from the videos are captured in the in this two-dimensional um, banner, sort of. And some of them too are captured over there. So it's a montage. Montage will be like uh, coming together of several images that are sourced from the internet. Uh, maybe tech talks and so on and so forth. Uh, am I making sense? Uh, OK. Any question? All right. Shall we? Next week on Tamale Experience. It's like it's in three dimensions. It can be measured in length, breadth, and height. Do you get it? But two dimensional works like paintings, photographs, you can measure them in length, breadth. And it's usually it's only length and breadth. That there are these strings. All of those strings are materials that are used in making the traditional drum. GICB Junior.